Hi guys, it's Paul from Lordcon here. This is my latest video and it's a conversion using the Junkers 88A1 in 30 second scale from Revel along with the Ames Multimedia conversion set to make it a Junkers 188. The set comprises largely resin pieces but also has PE items as you can see here on this fret and some vacuform canopy pieces. The one major section of the build is the forward fuselage incorporating the cockpit which is precast as you can see and there are other details to be added into this as we go along. The first 10 minutes or so of this video will show the original photos from the build about 7 or so years ago and then after that the updated version, the change of variant from reconnaissance to bomber and also the new colour scheme. So in these images following now you can see the instrument panel with the dials included. These are transfers and they look very nice indeed. And the left side panel on the pilot's side of the cockpit with various levers and other small dials as well. For the original reconnaissance version that I made, I had to open up the spaces under the forward nose area for four transparencies. And this is that area once these openings have been created. And this is the back of that forward nose area with the wing support, one of two here, from the actual Revel kit. And here now you can see the full assembly in place with the wing supports and the tailplane supports. And things are moving along quite nicely now. So the Junkers 188 had an extended wing and this came to a more pointed edge and the plastic wings have to be modified accordingly using the Ames replacement pieces. The join isn't too bad and only takes a small amount of filler to correct. The horizontal tail and the elevators as well as the ailerons also had extensions added onto them. The forward nacelle is replaced by a resin piece and this was slightly misaligned Points 1 and 2 here show the misalignment with the cowling colour and point 3 is where I had to cut through the engine mount to bring things together. These are the engine fronts, effectively the radiators and they needed a little bit of plastic card inserted to bring them round to a proper presentation. <coughs> But after doing that, this dry run shows just where that insert will sit. And coming up now, the engine cell with the front adjusted uh, part in place. And you can see the lower section is missing because that needs to get tidied up before being inserted. The propeller spinner is very nicely manufactured and the blades are appropriate for the type. And next up on the worktop is the assembly to date. So the forward fuselage is now in place and the resin replacement fin is in place as well. The wingtip adjustments and the engines are all visible there. And the upper fuselage insert, I chose not to use the vacuform piece, I modified the kit piece. And now in the foreground, the main canopy, the rear section, and the aircraft is up on its undercarriage now. Most of the kit is the Revel wings and fuselage etc. But once you get to detail in the cockpit, you find out just how um, restricted is the word I'm after, the space can be. If it's restricted for me building the model, it must have been pretty restricted for the crew in real life. 
So the seat belts you saw there, and this is the ventral rear section transparencies. And now some of the detail has been added in, the various seats, the seat belts and the control column. And this was the first <laughs> um, slightly off-grid approach to using PE. These pieces I damaged quite easily and I had to replace them with card. They are for the turret mounting. And the turret goes into this part of the cockpit glazing and I opened out various holes within the perimeter of that circular section and they were thereafter removed and the edges were sanded smooth. And holding up against the night sky you can see the effect that that piece of work brought about. Nice tidy opening for the turret. So I'm moving on here now to create the replacement pieces for the PE parts that I damaged and these will sit underneath the actual turret on the outer surface of the canopy. After cutting out a circular piece I had to cut out the centre section to accommodate the turret assembly. This is a dry run just to see where things would sit and the plastic card has been marked carefully in pencil and the pencil line is the extent to which I need to trim the card. There are also pieces for a machine gun in this position, should you wish to do that instead. And this is the mounting for the cannon. The cannon would sit to the left side as we look at it. The loop in the middle there is for the armoured glass. And this is one of the cannon mountings. It looks quite intricate and it can be, but it's not overly difficult. On the left side lower here we have the frame for the ammunition box which then has to have a dressing of plastic card applied to it. And the left side here, the grey part, is the cannon mount which caused me no end of trouble so it is now in a more simplified form. You'll see the full assembly for the turret in a moment but it is inserted here unpainted just to gauge how things were going at this stage. And needless to say, I was quite happy with this. And here indeed is the fully assembled turret. And I think coming up next, we have the cannon detail added in there as well. And this is facing the way the gunner would face with the cannon on the right side. And this is the opposite view. And then that assembly was painted up. And this is it as a test. Painted up and inserted into position. And it really starts to look rather smart. I can't remember what this red arrow is for. It was too far back to remember. But again, another view of the turret assembly. But I did make a slight mistake here. The two levels at the bottom of the turret were out of sync. I think it was the right side I trimmed ever so slightly to bring it back into line. The cannon barrel was replaced in the dorsal uh, turret with this brass piece which looks very good and slowly but surely we're getting round the various cockpit sections here with the um, seat belts and the ammunition feed for the rear machine gun. This is the turret for the dorsal cannon, the centre section for the main canopy with the instrument panel included and a little bit of extra detail in cabling. And there was also a small window there with a red handle. I don't know if you noticed it, but that will go into the left side of the cockpit in due course. Here you can see at the bottom right the section of the engine mount which will be going in in due course. And having done all that, it was time to add an undercoat. I painted up the frames for the canopy 
First time round building this, I didn't make a very good job of the main join lines in the canopy and I covered them up with tape. Um, I'm pleased to report I didn't have to do that this time round. Older and wiser, I think, is what that comes under. And gradually, this is all hand painted, I built up the splinter scheme. Over which, for this particular version, was applied regular stripes of pale blue grey. Some of you may well have seen this um, colour scheme applied to Junkers 188 online or indeed other people's models. It's very striking and I liked it at the time. I still like it as a colour scheme but broadly speaking the model was very tired looking and back in the day I liked a really matte finish which is not my preference nowadays. <coughs> Excuse me. So another reason for doing the refurb of this kit. And here the fuselage has been completed. The right wing has been marked out. And I think the left wing is now coming up. Yes. It's not a particularly difficult or time consuming colour scheme to do. Um, but of course, with every other colour scheme, you have to take care. And this was the final result back in the day. A Junkers 188 from Reconnaissance Group 33. I think it was um, captured in Denmark at the end of the war. Or somewhere in Scandinavia. So now we're on to um, removing the old scheme with uh, a product called Model Strip. It's a paint stripping paste. It tends to work better on smaller kits uh, because you don't have the same expanse of surface area to work on. Um, so you tend to get through it quicker. You are able to apply it easier. Um, if you do it on a large scale kit like this, you have to be very quick really applying it because it dries out very quickly. If it dries out, it won't work. And these engine pieces and propeller pieces have had the paste applied and they are then sealed in an airtight bag and left overnight, ideally. And eventually, at the end of all that process for all the pieces, I was able to get all the paint off and this is now the refurbishing uh, section starting up and I've just applied some filler onto the wing root here and I've also applied the um, upper fuselage insert and that's taped down while the glue dries as well and this all went relatively well the gap on the fuselage was filled with a piece of uh, plastic card and sanded smooth to blend it in. And that's us with the wing roots completed now. On the underside of the fuselage there were two transparent openings for the cameras. These were removed and will be filled in. And the join on the rear lower fuselage has been, um, uh, sorry, has had filler applied. And here we have the full engines, the fin, the rudder, undercarriage doors, and a few various other things. And we're moving on now to reapplying, or reattaching, I should say, the fin onto the rear fuselage. As you can see by the large opening in the tail <laughs> it came out with some uh, resistance but um, it wasn't beyond um, getting the fin relocated properly and just adding a little bit of liquid cement in here I find liquid cement for me anyway, I find liquid cement um, helps in drying out the uh, super glue a little bit quicker. Test that on an old kit first. Don't take my word for it though. I've always found it's quite a good tip.
and all in all I'm quite happy with the way that turned out. Just when I'm putting blue just now, there continued to be a bit of a gap and I believe coming up next you'll see the remedy for that which was a small sliver of plastic card inserted into the gap and again a little bit of glue applied to keep it in place and here we go this is the piece and there is the location it should go into and having test fitted it it's time to permanently fit it <coughs> And it's a relatively easy job. And that's it complete. So, all in all, pretty successful. And the rudder is also at the top of the frame here. That was a replacement piece as well. The 188 took the same tailplane as the Junkers 88G Night Fighter. Now these are small strips of plastic card glued together and because I'm turning it into a bomber version I have to fill in three of the four openings that I had made for the reconnaissance aircraft. I'm just trimming these at the relevant point. They will not fit perfectly to begin with but they were put in place and then padded out with filler and sanded smooth. This is the test fit for the main uh, former transparency area. Obviously it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be because I'm having to dismantle it slightly and trim it again. This area was actually opened up at a later stage to accommodate the bomb site. It's quite handy now having a an electric drill to um, help with all these jobs you used to do with sandpaper. I tend to find the base of my thumb becomes quite cramped if I'm doing too much sandpapering and holding small parts rigid while you sand them smooth or some such thing so I'm quite happy to have the, the electric drill to help out in these instances nowadays so I'm quite happy with this assembly now and I'm putting the basics into position as I say this will be padded out with filler in due course and smoothed out And this one fits in just about there. That's it. And there you go. Most of it is in place. A few other pieces were added in. And the same was done with the two side windows. And here we can see the basics, everything now in place and the opening created for the bomb site. <coughs> this was padded out with filler inside as well and this was sanded down to a more smooth effect because the cannon which was something that wasn't in the reconnaissance version. The cannon has to be added in and that was quite an intricate piece of work along with the bomb site. And coming up next, the undercoat is applied to the model for the colour scheme and then a coat of dark green. So I'll let you watch that and I'll come back to you shortly.
so that's the Revel green going on. Um, it ended up being an undercoat because I found it was a good paint, good coverage. So I say it's an enamel paint, but it's a little bit leaf green for my liking. Not really what I was wanting. I did actually find some of the old Humbro enamels that I used to use and in amongst that was RLM 71, the lighter of the two dark green shades. So I gave that a light spray coat over the upper surfaces before applying the Tamiya tape and that sorted the problem on this occasion. I then had to revert to Humbro acrylics to paint on the RLM 70, which is the darker of the two shades, but slowly but surely I think I'm beginning to find my way with these acrylics. It went on well and it gives a good finish. So now that the tape has gone on to the upper surfaces, I can use the acrylic RLM 71 to complete the colour scheme. next section after this shows the top of the right wing getting painted. Unfortunately, although the pattern is correct, I accidentally turned the shades round the wrong way. So the dark green is where the black green should be, and vice versa. However, it's not a big problem because the pale blue grey is coming along shortly, and you'll not see most of the green after that has been applied. And now you can see the removal of the tape and we can see just how good the demarcation is between the two shades. I like the look of that a lot and I think that will come up really nicely when the colour scheme is finished. So I'm going to leave you now to watch the next section and I'll come back to you in due course.
So that's the colour scheme on. The undersides I should add were painted a smoky black shade and then proper black was applied over the various panels leaving a thin area of the original smoky black along the panel lines. It's a slightly less detailed version of pre-shading I suppose but it came up quite smart. So what you saw there was me drilling a hole in the side of the fuselage and this is to accept a brass pin attached to the cartridge chute for the front cannon and this helps to give it some stability. I also added in the bomb sight and I created a support for that as well from brass tubing. The rear of the cannon was then supported by three additional brass struts and a fourth one passing through the body of the cannon in order again to keep things in place. Some details about the cannon assembly can be found in the information box under the video. The rudder was then added on and this was achieved by using super glue. And the next section will show the detail being added on to the pedals. And this was done by using a couple of tabs from the sprue. They were attached behind the pedals here using super glue, which is what I'm applying just now. And once in place, they were painted up. And then additionally, some fuse wire was put onto the rear of those pieces, thus bringing a little bit more detail to this part of the kit. <coughs> they should be slightly more at a diagonal position behind the pedals, but um, I'm happy enough with the way they are. This is the size of the tab that I used. And they were relatively easy to fit into position. You might also have noticed, once I get my fingers out the road, the ammunition feed from the ammo box at the front of the cockpit into the side of the cannon. Now this was something I really liked doing. This was two pieces of masking tape stuck together after drawing out the shape of the canopy opening where the cannon goes in pencil on one of these pieces. I then stuck the two bits of the tape together and I then cut round the outline of the shape as you can see here and that's the bit that went in inside the canopy and it was secured with crystal clear. After that was dry it was given two coats of future and I found that to be really quite helpful. It doesn't make it very tight but it does make it um, a little stronger. So next up is some black wash detail. I've already applied it to the horizontal tailplane there and cleaned it up. And now I'm applying the black wash onto the engine pieces. And in this next section, having already applied and let the black wash dry out, I'm carefully removing it from the wing upper surfaces. I always find this quite therapeutic, but it is a long and time consuming job, especially on a large model like this. But I think at the end of the build, Hopefully you'll see the benefit of this particular process. So I'll leave you to watch this and come back to you again soon.
So after that piece of work, it was time to address the exhaust flame dampers. I found these to be a little on the long side for a bomber aircraft and I had to remove a section to bring them into proper alignment. From contemporary wartime photos, it seems that bomber aircraft had a shorter flame damper and this stopped just under the leading edge of the wing, whereas the kit piece extends quite a bit further under the leading edge. So having removed a section from the flame dampers, this is a process for drawing it together again, using the front and rear sections, times four, and then I filled out the join line with some um, Mr. Surfacer filler and sanded that smooth at a later stage. Thereafter I moved on to the canopies. A small hole was cut in the top of the masking tape and the barrel of the cannon was inserted through seam. Getting the alignment correct is quite an important thing and it took a few minutes to get the barrel to sit just where I wanted it to be. The ridge for the transparent section to sit onto is very narrow and it was a little bit difficult getting it aligned. So I don't think it's a perfect alignment but certainly it's a lot tidier than it was previously. Moving on from that, I'm attaching the centre section of the canopy including the instrument panel. Here drawing crystal clear along the ledge where the canopy piece should sit. You'll notice there's a window missing on this side of the canopy at the back and that's where the small window that I mentioned earlier will be added in so you'll have an open window to see a very limited amount of detail within the cockpit. As you can tell it's a very constricted area to work in. It must have been quite difficult to work in in real life if you're a member of the crew but certainly the model is quite constricted. So you have to take your time really and do this slowly. And after doing that I ensured that the piece would sit in position by attaching a thin strip of Tamiya tape to clamp the piece down on the ledge until the crystal clear dried out. And slightly later again the rear canopy was put in place. So I'll leave you to watch this particular process and come back to you in a few minutes.
So that's the canopies on now in their entirety. The engines have been attached, as have the propellers. The exhaust flame dampers will be added shortly. And I also made up a pitot tube, which I've been trying to avoid knocking off the wing, and also the trailing aerial. Just applying a little bit of future to the transparent sections of the canopy in order to restore their clarity. It's a very busy cockpit, especially once a turret is added in, so I would imagine this helps the viewer to see through the canopies and some of the detail within the cockpit area. And this will be my last piece of work before I go off on holiday. I should be back early November and sometime thereafter my next video will be published. It will be a full build from start to finish and I'm looking forward to bringing that to you. So guys, it only remains for me now to thank you very much for following along. It's been really quite interesting reviving this old and somewhat tired looking model into something more up to date. And I like having changed the specification from a reconnaissance version to a bomber version. I hope you too have liked it and if so, please hit the appropriate buttons. That would be much appreciated. So until we meet up again, I wish you well and I'll catch you soon. Cheers. Bye.